Hello all of you awesome people out there and welcome back to another super awesome Mega Wicked Cool video done by myself, Disowned Hero. And today we're going to be catching up with my PI character here to see exactly what she's been up to. Now, we've already covered some basic PI stuff. I think we made P1 or P2 items. So if you've not checked those videos out already, I'll have them linked on the side here. So go and have a quick spy at them first. Since then, I've actually moved into P3 production. I've started making robotics because the corp wants fuel blocks. And I decided, hey, I've got a cool PI character here. I'm going to make the P3 stuff. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I am pretty skilled into PI now. I've got a planetary consolidation, I think it is, maxed out, which means I can have max amount of planets. And I've got the upgrades maxed out as well, so I can upgrade my planets to their maximum, which means huge amounts of things being made, mined, upgraded, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so not really much else to say on that. As you can see, all my planets are set up here. Essentially, I have one, two, three, four, five planets gathering raw materials and making P1 stuff. And then my final planet here is like a big factory, just taking all that P1 stuff and turning it into P3. Okay, so let's start jumping into the planets. So we'll simply start at the top and work our way down. Now, most of the planets are set up near enough identical. To be honest, I mean, the layout might be slightly different and you might find one planet will have four of these industry facilities and another might only have three. But they essentially all work and look exactly the same. So each of them will have two extractor control units and they'll both be mining exactly the same material. In this case, it's noble metals. From there, they'll be put straight into the storage facility. And what this storage facility is doing is it's acting as a sort of buffer because I am rather lazy and don't get things off my planets as often as I should and what happens is the Baron launch pad gets filled up which in turn stops the industry facilities from making things and then stops the extractors from extracting that precious raw material so if this does get filled up and all these stop then at least the extractors will keep going because they'll just feed straight into the storage facility and then when I'm not feeling lazy I can extract things off the planet and everything will carry on all honky doy which means minimum amount of downtime on the mining side. From the storage facilities they'll then go straight into the industry facilities and start making a P1 item I need. Uh, from there they'll go into the launch pad and as I said every now and then I can just offload the planet and take them to the final um, production planet which we'll get to later on. So the next planet is a lava one, as you can see, set up pretty much the same. We have two extractors here. These are doing non-CS crystals and non-CS crystals for that one. From there, they'll go into the storage facility. And then from there, they're being chained, turned into chival structures to go to the launch pad. This one again is doing heavy metals, which is being turned into toxic metals. And this one, we have base metals being turned into reactive metals. The only planet which is not actually contributing to making my P3 item is this one here. Essentially, I had an extra planet and I didn't really know what to do with it at the time, so I started making oxygen because oxygen is also needed for the fuel blocks. And I'll probably change that though to start making, I think it's chiral structures because I don't think the production's too well on them. Um, so yeah, I'll probably double up on the chiral production to make sure there are nothing stalls anywhere. Uh, but yeah, it works exactly the same. We have noble gas in this one, noble gas in this one, and that's making oxygen, and then I can simply offload them. Alright, so my sixth and final planet is my factory planet, as I like to call it, and we're currently way above it, next to the customs office, ready to start dumping lots of commodities into it. But before we do, let's have a quick look at what's going on down there. So as you can see, if we zoom right in here, you can see lots and lots of these advanced industry facilities. We also have more of them. Can't get me zoomed right. There we are. We also have more of them on this side and more of them up here. And I've tried to lay this out in a way which kind of makes sense. Hopefully you guys can follow exactly what's going on. We also have two of these storage facilities. These are massively important. So we're going to be dumping an absolute ton of commodities on here. We need space to put them. We have the command center. Obviously you need a command center for any planet. And we have a launch pad, which again, kind of on every planet, you need to get things on and off the planet. So what will happen is I'll essentially put commodities onto the planet through the launch pad and then manually move them. What's the word for that? I forget now. Uh, expedition transfer. So I will use an expedition transfer to move them to one of these facilities before I put more stuff on there and just keep it well in there. Uh, in turn, they will then get rooted to one of these sides here. Uh, on this side, it will take the toxic materials and the chiral i keep probably saying that wrong i think it's chiral chiral structures and make consumer electronics and on this side it'll take the other two the precious metals the reactive metals 
and make the uh, mechanical parts. From there, they'll get rooted straight into the advanced industry facilities. These are making exactly enough to run all of these, which is quite cool. So they don't need a storage or a buffer or anything. And these are actually making the robotics. From there, they'll get dumped into, I think, this storage facility, ready for me to do an expedition transfer back to the launch pad to get them off the planet. Now, as you can see, this has been made and set up, but it's not actually running yet. These are missing a vital component. And I have brought that component with me. So what we need to do now is go into the launch pad and open up the launch button. Yes, open up the launch button. We also need to get over to the customs office and open that as well. And what we can do now, is simply open up our cargo and drag everything over here. We'll just put it in to the customs office for now so we know where it is. We're not gonna drag over the oxygen, that's not needed. I just picked that up while I was there on the way. And uh, yeah, what we need to do now is we need to get everything else we need onto this planet. So let's try and get my head around this. This side, well, this side's doing fine. Um, it needs just the chiral structures. And this side's doing fine. It just needs the precious metal. So that's exactly what I'm going to put on here today. We need the... I need to move them first, actually, don't I? Bear with me, guys. Let me figure this out. Okay, sorry. So we're back. What I've done there is I've simply put all the items I had on the planet and managed to get them in here. So this one is holding both the reactive metals and toxic metals but only two of the components we need we need four all together and they are sitting quite happily still up in the customs office and we need to bring them down so we need the chiral structures i'm simply going to drag them over and we need the what was the other one so we've got reactive and toxic which means we need precious metals and i know this is not a lot these planets have not been running for too long so hopefully we'll get more and also if you had multiple characters doing this you could make loads more p1 items meaning that you'd obviously get more robotics at the end as well there'd be no stalling no waiting around this thing would just be running absolutely constantly it's also a good idea to try and stagger when you're going to bring items to a planet like this if you bring all four items like i just have you're going to be waiting ages for expedition transfers like there's a time or cool down for when you can you do one you're gonna wait like 10 minutes for another one which planet you're on determines how long you wait i'm not gonna get into that too much but yeah we stagger them out so say i bring chival structures one day and then the next day i simply bring the pressures and the next day reactive the next day toxic i'll never have to wait for that expedition time it'll kind of just keep running uh, constantly with minimal time me sitting around so yeah we've transferred them over we can see there's a cost down there like a tax to pay for bringing them down we simply hit transfer oh wait, i need to submit that first there we go uh, and then we can bring these down a chival and i forgot what it was already uh precious yeah precious we simply whack them there hit transfer and there you go they are now on the planet ready to go now what i could do if the, if all these were empty like that one was empty i could simply hit expedition transfer and move them to there which at the moment i still have to wait like what five hours or something which is lovely uh that's why you want to stagger them out over the day uh, so yeah i could expedition transfer them to there which will free up the launch pad mean i can get more items down but um, don't need to do that today. We're just going to leave them there. So what I'm going to do instead is go into the storage. See that these two are sitting there. And I'm going to start creating routes for these. So which side needed this? Are these? Yeah. Uh, you can't actually route something to a facility which doesn't need it. So for example, if I said, was it this side? And click that. It tells me there. Can't do that because it doesn't need it. So I'd click this one. Oh, well, that's quite good. We've maxed out the waypoints. Not a problem. We can simply just build some more. Let's do a waypoint from here straight to there. 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 That should help it out. Submit that. Let's, let's try it again. Um, create to there. If you're not sure what happened there, I would definitely recommend checking out one of my previous videos. Essentially, think of these links as roads, and you can only have so much stuff moving through them before you like fill the road up. So uh, yeah, you just simply make more roads. Problem solved. So put that one there, and that one there. So that should be this side now, up and going, fully producing what it needs. So there we go. Counting down. It's going to take an hour to produce uh, these things, and then from there they'll be routed into the T3 production facilities up there. Uh, so same for this side, this needs the precious metals, we'll simply create a route. 
It also helps if you do keep things symmetrical, because like you see, and I noticed that one didn't work, which means I wouldn't be able to send it to there either. So I just instantly made a road, as I call them, uh, up there, anticipating that it was just going to say, ah, ah, no. That's it, all happy, honky doy, everything should be going. We simply hit submit. And that's it, this will now start ticking down once they've made the items they're making. They'll simply feed them up to here. And then this will make everything it needs to feed into here, which should be empty because I don't think I've actually produced any yet. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll just fast forward time, watch all these nice little spinning circles spin around. And uh, yeah, we'll just make sure these are working. And then make sure that they actually put them into here. And then we'll finally have a P3 item. So sit back, guys. I might find some funky music to put on. And uh, yeah, let's just watch some circles spin. Oh, before we go quickly, I should mention that you do not need to be in space to actually view your planet. So I can simply tell myself to dock up so I am nice and safe. No one can come and gank me, not to do well anyway, I don't really have much on me. But yeah, you can view your planets and adjust them and modify them like this whilst docked up. You just need to actually put the stuff into the customs office before you can make any changes. All right, guys, so there we go. As you can see, this planet is working absolutely brilliantly. These have all finished their cycle and everything has moved on to the P3 production and the P2s all down here have all started again. They've all been given their input materials from wherever they're getting them from and they've all started producing again. And I'm pretty confident, I've double checked these, they are all going to root straight into here once they're done. Now, it's always a good idea to check your planets, especially bigger ones like this, once you've set them up because the last thing you want to do is click OK, run, go. You've put all your your money into them you put all your p1 materials in here you've hit go and then you're just going to leave it for a week and it's so disappointing if you come back after a week to find that nothing's happened and maybe maybe you didn't route the output materials correctly and everything stalled maybe the input materials aren't going to the correct units so anything could really stop these things from running so once you set them up always a good idea maybe the next day in the morning maybe an hour or two after you've set them up if you're still online just look back for your little planetary production window and just make sure everything's working as you intended it's also good to know that if oops if uh, this wasn't running correctly even if just one little facility decided to stall or stop for whatever reason this would have a huge circle like red circle around it with a big line through it telling you straight away something's wrong something needs attention come back and fix me so kind of like what it was when we first logged in when it didn't have all the materials it needed it'll have something like that when it comes to these basic planets, I'm going to call them basic planets as in they're just extracting. Uh, it's always good to get as many extractors and extractor heads as possible. The more raw material you pull off the planet, uh, it's going to show directly correlate to how much P3 items or how much anything you're going to be producing. If you decide to just put one extract head on each of these planets and fill it out with their facilities, then one, half your facilities aren't going to be used, but two, you're going to have hardly any end product. You want max Max, 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 max uh, extraction, mining on these planets. And you want this thing here doing most of the manufacturing if you can. It's also worth noting that you don't want to take things off planet and put them back on that often. So if you can minimize that process, you know, rather than having so maybe all these are just extracting, then another planet for P1 production, another planet for P2 production, another planet for P3 production. If you do that, you're going to be moving things on and off planet like four, five, six times. And uh, yeah, you're just going to incur loads of charges through the tax. And that's going to waste your money and also your time. So hence why I just have the one production planet here, which might be a little bit slow, but it's always good. Again, like I said, we have an extra planet here 
this one, especially for robotics. I know we have this extra planet, which I am probably going to use for making these things. Like I say, I'm a bit short on them. But if this like factory planet wasn't producing things fast enough and I was getting like uh, so lots of P1 items stored up, so getting bigger and bigger and bigger because this isn't burning through them fast enough, I could easily turn this extra planet into another factory planet and have two of them running side by side just to make sure so I get through everything and make the max amount of money possible. Alright guys, I hope that all makes sense. I'm a little bit tired myself now. I don't know if I'm going to show up, but I had a little nap then while all they were spinning around. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go to quick quits here. So if you did like this video, then please hit that like button down below and let me know if you want to see some more PI stuff. Other than that, guys, I'll see you right here very soon in another video. Bye-bye. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well to get some more game guides, how-tos, let's plays, and live streams from myself. I also think you should check out this video just up here, but if that one doesn't interest you, then try this one. Other than that, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you soon.